I'm from Shakopee, Minnesota. Well, I was born in Maplewood, Minnesota, but raised in Shakopee. So in my free time, I, I'm from Minnesota, so I play a lot of hockey. Um, me and my brother Alex, we rent the ice out every Wednesday in Prior Lake. If anybody wants to go, 7 o'clock. Um, so yeah, we play a lot of hockey. Well, we're here today with uh, two interesting people. Uh, one that uh, we've seen before on Talk of the Track, uh, Eli Hernandez, who is the chaplain out at Santa Anita and Del Mar. And uh, he's brought us other uh, interesting stories before. But uh, this time, we're here with uh, Ashley uh, Kinchari. You're going to have it. How you, did I do OK? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> OK, good. <laughs> Uh, however, uh, her brother, uh, Patrick, um, is met with a real bad accident. But before we get to that, we'll kind of ask her to kind of give us an update of uh, maybe uh, Patrick's, uh, how he got started and, and maybe a little bit about yourself. And uh, maybe you could do that. Sure, of course. Um, my name is Ashley Kanchari. I'm the oldest of all the Kanchari kids. So there's four of us total. There's three other boys, um, Patrick, and then Alex also is a jockey. And then we have a younger brother, Steven, who may or may not be, we'll see. Um, we grew up in Shakopee, Minnesota, um, really at the racetrack, Canterbury. So um, spent years there. And then uh, Patrick initially learned most of his stuff at Canterbury, but when he was 18, after he graduated high school, he actually went to um, the jockey school down in Peru um, to learn how to ride. Um, and then he came back to the United States and, and rode here for the last 10 years. So, yeah. I started working with racehorses pretty young because my dad, he always owned horses and trained horses. And he was a jockey in the 80s and 90s. Um, so I got my first job with Troy Bethke when I was about 12 or 13. I was just like doing laundry and stuff and cleaning stalls and then just been doing it ever since. The, uh, the accident took place in March? Yep, on St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, my goodness. Ironic, That's yeah. too much of a coincidence. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and so anyway, he had uh, some some brain damage, and uh, what what was the extent? Um. So I guess the big the big thing was he had a diffuse axonal injury, which is a traumatic brain injury, and it was very severe and. Um, it didn't just impact like one region of his brain. It was the entire thing. It wasn't just the frontal lobe. It was the entire thing. Um, and it, it's very severe, like as severe as it could be. Um, and so that, and then he also suffered a, a C3 fracture to his neck. Um, but that was, I guess, the, the extent of his injuries. Yeah. So... Is he at this time able to recognize people or is there any? Um, we think so. I mean, we think so. We think he definitely responds to me or my mom or um, my daughter, especially him and her have a very close relationship. So anytime we put her on the iPad or on FaceTime with him, he definitely responds to her. But I mean, he's he's nonverbal at this time there's some words that his speech therapist is working to get out of him. Um, but he also has a, what's called dysphagia where even if he is thinking something, his mouth isn't really like connecting with the ability to express and verbalize those thoughts. Um, so his speech therapist is working with him on that. But um, yeah, we think he can recognize us, but he's not at the point yet where he's verbalizing that to us. Right, and to top it all off, this happened during the epidemic that we have, and so you've not really been able to go visit. Is that true? Yeah, so we saw him the day of his accident, um, and then actually that night at, at 5 in the morning, they kicked all visitors out of every hospital in Arizona um, because of COVID. Um, and so since then, within those last like almost three months now, 
I've been able to personally go in and do some family training with um, his therapist twice, but so we've only seen him those two times. Otherwise, it's it's solely through FaceTime. I see. And that obviously, I guess, has made it rough also. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, his racing career, uh, so what, it was how many years, do you know? Uh, about the past 10 years, yeah. And he races at Turf Paradise, but also uh, at Canterbury? Canterbury, sometimes Prairie Meadow. I mean, he goes lots of different places. So, But yeah. mainly at Turf Paradise and, and Canterbury are his two main tracks. Yeah. What I do to get ready for a race, so every day I'll come in at about 4.30, 5 o'clock, and then I'll run a mile or two miles on the racetrack in, like, uh, in sweats and everything, you know, get my body warmed up. And then I'll go into the sauna and sweat a little bit in there and then just sleep until I have to ride. <laughs> my favorite horse I've probably ever ridden is uh, Majestic Affair. I only rode him one time and then uh, it was for Doug Oliver. He won first time out by 16 lengths and like four days later they sold him to Chad Brown. And so he's running in New York and everything, and stakes races and stuff. That was probably my favorite horse that I've ever ridden. If I wasn't a jockey, I'd probably want to be a hockey player, but I'm too small, so I'm a jockey. <laughs> so my first memory of the racetrack is I was probably four years old. My dad had a horse named Red Ronnie. I remember just my dad throwing me up on his back and just riding around the shed row, like with my dad's helmet on and everything. And I don't know, I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> Horses have taught me to have a lot of patience because they're all different. They got their little quirks and everything, and you can't just rush them and try to get where you want to be. You just have to relax and just be patient. Mentioned the family and how they're involved in horses, but I also saw that I, I think the father uh, was a trainer, an owner, a jockey. Oh yeah, everything. Yeah, my dad. <laughs> um, I guess that's how my brothers ended up in the industry is because my dad was previously a jockey in the 80s, I think, um, and then an owner and a trainer and basically everything you can be within the industry. <laughs> so now have you been involved with them? No, no. My, my dad always kept me out of horse racing. Um, I was always the academic in the family and my brothers will tell you that too. Um, and so a lot of people don't even know really that I exist. And so <laughs> my brothers will introduce me to a trainer and owner and they'll be like, Oh, I didn't know that they had a sister. Eli, did you have any uh, things that you wanted to mention? Well, first of all, Ashley, I want to thank you for taking the time to, you know, speak with us and mm -hmm. definitely know that um, our hearts and our prayers and our thoughts are with Patrick, yourself and the family. And we appreciate, you know, we, we definitely want to help any way we can, mm -hmm. not, not just here at Santa Anita, Del Mar racetracks, but in all the tracks, you know, mm -hmm. uh, we want to let other people know that, you know, we want them to continue to pray for Patrick and for yeah. your family and so on. And we just want to reach out any way we can because, uh, you know, him being a jockey, that means he's part of our family because mm -hmm. this is a whole family. So yeah. we want to pretty much just surround him with encouragement, surround you, the family, with encouragement. And just to let you know that, you know what, we're praying for you and we care about what's going on. When, yeah. when one race tracker falls, believe me, it affects all of us, all yeah. of us together know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we appreciate y'all so much. I was shocked, honestly. Like I knew my brother has always been extremely giving and, you know, involved with any, anyone who's ever had any kind of setback or injury or anything. He's always been going above and beyond to reach out to them. But when his injury happened, I couldn't believe, like, there's just so many people that have reached out and and have been helping our family and it's just it's overwhelming um but it's just it's truly it's unbelievable honestly yeah well we appreciate once again you taking the time and uh we'll post okay. this on talk of the track and probably a lot of people that uh, know him will, will react yeah um is there anything that we can do? I, I tell you what, I understand you have a GoFundMe page. If you'll send me that link, I'll uh, mm -hmm. publish that along the way. I will. Yep. Um, I guess 
the big thing right now, like in this moment is um, raising additional funds. It's going to cost almost 20 grand to fly him back to Minnesota. Um, so, and within the next few days, we need to get that in place. Um, so right now, I guess my focus is, you know, reaching out to some of the bigger donors or and even the smaller ones too. Um, but just getting that funding in place for him. So we are able to transfer him out and back to Minnesota with our family. Okay. 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 Race trackers, you, you have an opportunity here to do the right thing. We have an opportunity to help out. And uh, this is a great opportunity to help Patrick and the family to get this done. Okay, well, um, thank you very much, Ashley. And um, well, yeah, no problem. Thank, thank you, you, Eli. Eli, give us, a, give us a Santa Anita update. What's going on? Well, we got our races back, so uh, everybody's pretty happy about that, that we're racing again. We'll be racing until uh, June the 21st, Father's Day, and then uh, the race is going to be at Los Alamitos. And then from there, we're going to start uh, July the 10th. That's the schedule to start racing in Del Mar. So we're excited. Uh, the people on the backside are excited. Uh, we continue to support them in any way we can with food, shoes, pampers, uh, gift cards, and just always give them a listening ear and uh, be able to just be here for them and just to let them know, number one, God loves them and we love them. Okay. Ashley, thank you very much. Thank you, Eli.